Howdy partners, why don't y'all grab a space and let's get into our Wednesday workout. Put your favorite music on, one that motivates you to move, and let's get into it. It doesn't matter if your legs are straight or if they don't go up that high, but do try to keep your back straight. This way, you will be strengthening your back muscles too. You will see that I am doing three steps in place to change legs. That's the submaximal level we need to keep our heart pumping for eight and a half minutes. If you want to pump up the rhythm, the level a little bit, knowing that if not, it's too easy for you, just switch legs each kick. And you can also vary, go back and forth from three little steps, one leg, three steps, the other leg. Then kick one, kick the other, kick one, kick the other, back to three little steps, kick one, and so on and so forth. It would be a good idea to jot down your resting heart rate, that is, before doing anything. Take your pulse by putting your index and middle finger over one of the two carotid arteries in your neck, on the right or left. This is the main blood vessel that supplies your blood to the brain, neck, and face, and it is usually easier to find that pulse than the one on your wrist. Count for 60 seconds, or for 30 seconds, and multiply by two. That's your resting heart rate. The idea in aerobic training is to subject your body to stress. A vigorous continuous movement, which should have a minimum duration of three minutes. After a few sessions of the same type of vigorous movement, your body will become more or less accustomed or conditioned, and the same stress will not cause the same fatigue. So, in general terms, 70% of your maximum cardiac frequency will indicate the beginning of that chain zone in which the physiology of your body will start working under slight oxygen debt conditions. And 85% of your maximum cardiac frequency will indicate the upper level of your change zone in which you will be working at a high level of oxygen debt. So this is the zone, this change zone, in which we want to continue our aerobic training, especially at the beginning. So the formula is 220 beats per minute minus your age times 70% to mark that lower level of the change zone and 220 minus your age times 85% to indicate the higher level of your change zone. So let's take, for example, 
If you're a 60 year old person, 220 minus 60 is 160 beats per minute. Multiply that by 70% and you get 112 beats per minute. That's where your physiology starts working with a slight oxygen debt. If you do the same thing, using 85%, 160 times 85% equals 136 beats per minute, and that will indicate your maximum cardiac frequency of your personal zone change. So this is your personal zone change area workout. Now you're ready to make your own aerobic training program. How are you gonna do that? Well, you're going to chart the data, starting with your change zone that you just established. Let's make a chart. On the vertical or Y axis, you're going to indicate beats per minute, starting at 40 beats per minute down at the bottom and going up to 220, which will represent that maximum cardiac frequency up at the top. I would use five beat per minute increments. And then down on the horizontal or x-axis, you're going to indicate the intensity and or duration of each exercise. So for purposes of this example, we are going to work only with the intensity or varying the, the intensity of the exercise and not the duration. But of course you can do both one or the other as you choose. So. These four exercises are going to have a three minute duration. The first one, for example, you're going to walk fast with no slope. Take your pulse, jot it down. The second one, you're going to run with a slow pace, no slope. Take your pulse, jot it down. The third exercise, you will be walking fast up a slope. Take your pulse, jot it down. And in the fourth exercise, you will be running up a slope. Take your pulse and jot it down. And once again, each one, duration three minutes. So now you join the dots on that graph and you see where those beats per minute fall. Do they fall below your change zone? Well, you can pump up the intensity. Are they within that change zone? Well, you're good. Do they go above that change zone? Well, you should either lower the intensity or the duration so that those beats per minute are especially at the beginning inside that change zone. So that's all the information that I wanted to give you today. It's pretty much packed, but I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please hit that like button. And if you don't want to miss upcoming videos, especially Wednesday workouts, well, subscribe. It's been a pleasure. See you next time, ranchers.